First, we will take over the world, and then we'll enslave all pathetic humans. We will be king and queen, because you're so strong and I'm so rich, I said. And I laughed wickedly, envisioning how I'll rule the planet and my crush will carry me around in his arms and just like a true Captain America, protect me from all kinds of idiots. Except my new sweetheart wasn't happy to hear me say that. He ran away, terrified. Pfft, what a sissy. What did I even say? Yet another one of my crushes panicked and ran away from me. Am I missing something? Why doesn't stupid Cupid hit guys right in the heart with his arrows? The guys I'm crazy about. No, you're just rich and bossy. That's why they run away, explained my friend Debbie, who's always been a hit with guys because she was a nice, kind girl from a simple family. Well, that's it. I'm going to burn all my money now so someone will fall in love with me. <laughs> that's crazy. Hi, my name is Edzumi, and all the guys are afraid of me because I'm the daughter of millionaires. What am I supposed to do, Debbie? I asked with an exasperated pout. Just be nice and try not to talk so much about how you want to rule the world. Don't forget to laugh at guys' jokes even if they're dumb. They like it. You mean I have to look as stupid as they do? I was indignant. Debbie suddenly cried. I think I went too far. I immediately apologized to her. I told her that I was just jealous of her because I could only dream of having so much success with good-looking guys. I tried everything I could to date boys. I paid money to one, but as soon as he saved up enough money, he went straight to Japan. I scared the other one too much, saying that if he didn't kiss me, his whole family would suffer. And I almost got my first kiss, but he passed out from fear, and then he didn't show up at school at all. My agents searched all over town for him. <laughs> Another weakling couldn't take it and ran away. And the third one and I hung out at a party. I tried to be quieter so I wouldn't scare him for sure. But he thought I was a fool who, like a dog on the dashboard of a car, can only nod its head. And this guy here is my fourth attempt. His name is Shannon, and he's very strong and incredibly handsome. I've never fallen in love so hard in my life. I thought for a long time about how to make a move on him. I had a plan in my head to hire special agents, invade Shannon's house, kidnap him, and then take him to my country estate. But I couldn't find such daring agents, although the plan was truly genius. Then I had to take Debbie's advice, who had long ago told me that guys, like girls, love compliments. So I decided to admire his muscles, which made me shiver in a pleasant way. But I got carried away. I had already imagined us taking over the world together, which I told him about, because he's so strong. And then, well, you already know, he got scared. He ran away too. No way! I'm not letting a guy get away from me this time. I like Shannon too much, and I'll do anything to make sure he's mine, even if I have to tread on someone's head, rob a bank, and ride a camel through town shouting about my feelings for him. I decided I was too smart and proud for all the nonsense Debbie told me. She doesn't need to pretend to be a nice, silly girl because she always is. And I didn't want to lose face. So I did the smart, grown-up thing. I paid money to a fortune teller to make me a love potion. I paid a hundred thousand bucks for it. One day, I discreetly put it in Shannon's tea when we were in the cafeteria. And the tea started foaming. Hmm, I wonder if that's normal. I didn't have time to speculate about it because Shannon was already on his way back to the table. At that moment, some dumb jerk decided to throw a basketball in the cafeteria and knocked over his cup of tea with my expensive love potion in it. Aha, this is a disaster. I immediately ran up to the jerk and slapped him in the face. I'll burn your heart out, you idiot. I have enough money and influence to turn you into a pile of ashes, which I'll throw in my marble fireplace. Everyone was staring at us in shock. Debbie was almost crying with fear. And Shannon, oh, my Shannon was scared again. What am I supposed to do? What? The guy with the ball was clearly almost pissing his pants with fear. <laughs> Come on, I was just kidding. Just don't play with your ball in the cafeteria anymore. You're a smart and big boy, I said with a fake laugh. I patted him on the shoulder, thinking that I had fallen below Debbie's level of stupidity. I heard a loud pop, 
and it was the sound of a facepalm. Debbie was ready to smash her forehead out of shame for me. Oh, come on. I feel like that all the time when I'm around her. Debbie quickly led me away from the cafeteria and asked me what was going on in my head. I eagerly told her about my plan to put a spell on Shannon. I wasn't ashamed of my genius idea. That's really dumb, she said. Okay, Izumi, I'm going to write you a concrete plan of action. You'll need to follow it. No more trying to enchant or poison Shannon. <laughs> I was so desperate, I agreed. Debbie's list included a cute giggle, light flirting, and also a lot of compliments for Shannon, all of which she came up with. And of course, that dumb point about laughing in the posed way at all the jokes. I wasn't sure how effective this plan was, so I thought about booking a private jet, tricking Shannon into it, and flying with him to a deserted island. There, I could show him my strength and courage, and a great body in a swimsuit to make sure he would fall in love with me. But in the end, the next day I still had to wear the cute dress Debbie had gotten me. I looked like a Barbie doll, if not worse. And with that, I got the attention of all the guys. And of course, Shannon. Yes, he finally looked at me with interest instead of fear. In class, I tried to flirt with him, throwing him notes with cute compliments and doodles. Oh, it was so cheesy. But I was willing to put up with it all for Shannon's love. The boy looked at me all confused. And after class, he said he wouldn't fall for my stupid prank. I responded by saying that he had a beautiful voice and that his muscles were as hard as a rock. Shannon was shocked, and without answering me, he wandered off into the hallway for recess. Meanwhile, Debbie ran up to me and said that I shouldn't leave him alone right now. Then we walked over to Shannon again, and he made some dumb joke about the cloudy weather. I laughed. I laughed so hard the whole hallway heard me. Yeah, you've never heard such opposed laughter. What's so funny? Shannon asked. It's like rain and midgets. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, I was actually talking about how I lost my dog Midget in this kind of weather. I got hit by a car. Shannon frowned and walked away. Oh, and I wanted to cringe with embarrassment. Debbie snapped at me, saying that I still had to use my brain to get a guy, not to laugh at everything without even listening to him. She said I had to apologize to Shannon. Oh, I was about to get discouraged, so I went looking for Shannon. I found him at the gym. He was hugging some girl. What? How dare he hug someone when I'm in love with him? It's against all the rules of my made-up code. I immediately pulled out my phone and called Tom. Oh, nobody should ever cross paths with Tom. He would do anything to change one's life. For the worse, of course. I placed an order, and Tom promised to do everything in the best possible way. But I regretted it deeply. The girl Shannon was hugging turned out to be his cousin. She twisted her ankle and couldn't walk. So my hero Shannon just decided to help her. They were surprised when they saw Tom turning that girl's car into a tin can with the wheels of his bulldozer. And then everyone learned the shameful secret from her personal diary, which Tom was able to get quickly. The girl <laughs> cried, the boys tried to comfort her, and I wanted to run away. But Shannon grabbed my hand. I know you did it. You're the only brat at school. There's a reason why everyone keeps avoiding you. Are all millionaires' kids such idiots? He went ballistic. N no. For the first time in my life, I was confused. I didn't do it on purpose. Of course not. You're very strange and dangerous. It's better to stay away from rich people. I ran around the corner. And for the first time in years, I cried like some wimp. Debbie usually whines and I make fun of her. And now I was crying over a boy who will never be mine. Debbie found me and she comforted me by telling me that Shannon just wasn't my type and that I needed a boy from my own social circles because I always fall in love with boys from regular families, most of whom are prejudiced against rich families. I'd rather just go back to being a spoiled brat and enjoy my life. Just as I got used to the thought of being a loner who had to take over the world on her own when I got splashed by a car. I was about to call Tom and give him the license plate number of the car when the driver stopped, turned around, and got out of the car. Miss, are you all right? He asked. No, are you blind? Can't you see the girl walking? You could have slowed down. Your beauty blinded me. I was taken aback by that response. The guy introduced himself. His name was Jensen. 
and offered to drive me home in his Ferrari. We chatted on the way home, and I found out that Jensen came from a very wealthy family. He said he had so much money that he could take over the world and rule over people. When I heard that, I became even more engaged in the conversation. Jensen said I'd make a great world ruler. But your strength and courage still need to be tested. Mm, let's say on a desert island. Get ready, I'll kidnap you soon. He grinned. <laughs> I was smitten. That's the best compliment I've ever gotten in my life. Finally, this kidnapping happened when I was on my way home from school. We flew off to a desert island where everything was already prepared for our arrival. We didn't have to cook a meal. We didn't have to build a tent. But that's not what people do on the desert island. We came up with a plan to take over the world. Then we went fishing and then watched a gorgeous sunset. At which point, for some reason, I complained to Jensen that all guys are afraid of me because I'm the daughter of millionaires. He said that guys are cowards and wimps and poor idiots who will soon be our slaves. Someone like you, baby, needs a man like me. Powerful, rich, and handsome. You and I would be the perfect couple at Zumi. I got shy and took his hand. And I didn't have to laugh at silly jokes or play cute. I could be myself around Jensen. And that is the most important thing in a relationship. Would you be afraid to date such a flashy rich man? Write your answers in the comments. Like the video and share it with your friends. Share it with your friends.